hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Wild World Podcast. I'm your host Thomas from the Wild World YouTube channel and joining me as always is my AI co-host Mika. Spring has sprung in the Northern Hemisphere at least. I hope everyone is enjoying the longer days. Yeah. And tomorrow's Easter if you celebrate it. Yeah, if the podcast is out by then. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy late Easter. Yeah. Well, before we get into some of our news stories, is there anything on your wildlife radar? Uh, yeah, there's a few things. Uh, first of all, before I forget, my sister has sent in a few clips and photos she wanted us to share. Have you seen them? No. They're in the folder. Oh. There's two, one, there's a picture and then a video with a tree. She actually sent this first one a long time ago. Can you see it? The picture? Oh, is it? Uh, oh, the hawk it's, that just killed yeah. a rodent? Yeah, you can see like blood and stuff. What's the video of? Um, there's a video. <laughs> just one pigeon screaming at another one as he's trying to leave. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I was talking about the second video. Okay, I'm watching it now. Oh, she's just zooming uh, in on the on the bird of prey. Yeah, so she lives in uh, around Boston. And then the second video is is really interesting and funny. It's two two pigeons fighting, like you said. Like, well, one of the pigeon, <laughs> one pigeon is just like harassing the other pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> like it's flapping screaming its, in its ear. And then the other the pigeon isn't even fighting back. It's just like trying to get away. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. We could. Are you gonna add those clips to the um, YouTube? Yeah, I guess I should. So that's from my sister. Everyone, thank my sister. Um, other than that, the weather has been pretty variable around here. So it's in spring, but like also still winter. There have been blizzards and sunny, warm days. One day there was a blizzard recently, and I was looking at the prairie dog colony. They're all mm -hmm. asleep. And resting, except one crazy little prairie dog was running around <laughs> in the snow. I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what a weirdo. Now it's all melted and all the prairie dogs are out. They're very cute. Um, in the pond in my backyard, there were some ducks. There was a duck couple. And they were. I was wondering maybe they're going to build a nest. But oh, wow. apparently they've tried it before and none of their babies survived. None of their oh, eggs no. hatched. Sort of cursed. Later this week is going to be an eclipse across North America. And so actually I read that animals might behave differently. They might get confused and go to bed early. So oh. that'll be interesting. I've never seen a full eclipse before. Me neither. Um, and then lastly, there was something on the news. I didn't really understand what they were talking about, but apparently there are spinning sawfish in Florida. They're like spinning around and dying. And no one knows why they're spinning around. Have you heard about that? No. They're dying because they're spinning? Or are they like spinning and beaching themselves? Like, yeah, going? like spinning and out, they're out of the water. And... That's very strange. <laughs> yeah. So what about you? What's your wildlife radar? I don't know too much, but speaking of birds of prey, I was in the forest like a couple of weeks ago, and I was walking down a path, and I heard birds screeching. And as I got closer, there was like a hawk, and I caught a magpie. Mm. And then I flew it over a river. I don't know if it had like killed it beforehand, but it like landed it so its head was under the water. So it was like the hawk was drowning the magpie. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. It's crazy, bro. Mm. Then the, did the magpie die? Like. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was already dead by the time it was being waterboarded or whatever. But <laughs> I mean, did you see what happened after they eat the magpie? Uh, then it just flew off with the magpie. I presume it ate it. Huh. That's I don't good. mess around. That's probably the best story you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's the, first, it's the first good story I've had. It's usually like, I don't know, I saw a bug on my floor or something. <laughs> oh, wait. You have more news. Your your spider, your pet spider molted and became huge. Yeah, it's not really my pet. He's your pet. Young Gabe. Mm-hmm. Oh, big for a house spider, I guess. Can you remind everyone why he's named Gabe and maybe put a picture on the YouTube video? There's two reasons. One, <laughs> so he's named after Gabe from The Office. So, firstly, Gabe in The Office is sort of long and spindly. No offense <laughs> to the actor. He's watching, he's listening right now. He's like, how dare they? 
he's like tearing up. So <laughs> he sort of reminds me of him. But also, I used to always get like a, a little surprised or shocked when like Gabe the spider was running over the curtains. <laughs> And it reminded me how, how, like Michael said in one episode, every time he saw Gabe, he was surprised. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all I have to say about that. Should we jump into the news? Sure. Um, so should I go first? Yep. Okay. Well, guess what they've trained rats to do now? Ooh, trained rats to do solve some kind of puzzle? Um, nope. They've trained rats to do something very... Uh, Popular amongst humans. Popular amongst humans? Mm-hmm. Something Listen that... Listen to music? No. Something that humans our age are really into, but maybe not humans older than us. Uh, what are we really into? I don't know. I'll tell you, okay? They've trained rats to take selfies. What? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. So, um, if you were going to train a rat to take a selfie, how do you think you would do that? I don't know. I'd probably just give up. Okay. Or <laughs> I'd give a small dose of sugar No, don't read that. Don't read the... that. No. <laughs> okay, well, look at it that. would be... Okay, well, I would have guessed it was some reward system, though. Yeah. That if they hit a button, if they hit a particular button, they get a treat. Uh-huh. But are the, are the rats aware? Are, are like, rats self-aware? Like, so... can, can they... It's unclear, but here's what they've done. They uh, they have the rat in a little box, and there's a button, and if you press the button, a little bit of sugar comes out, and you can eat it. And then immediately after you press the button, and uh, like simultaneously as the sugar appears, there's a picture displayed, and that's the picture that the rat took. So if you keep doing it over and over, those pictures keep <clears throat> showing up. So it's unclear if they know it's them, but they definitely uh, see the picture. It sounds uh, like they're just being trained to press a button. However... Then they wean the rat off of it intermittently. Yeah. So they don't always give the sugar. And, um, well, what do you think? Do you think that the rats enjoyed it? Do you think they learned to do the selfie thing? I don't know. It sounds like they've just been conditioned to like pressing a button. It so, could be, the button could be doing anything. So it seems the conclusion is that they actually really enjoy taking the selfies and not because of the training of the sugar. Because, here, here's the reason for it, not only were they weaning them off of the sugar and not giving it every time, but sometimes the rats would ignore the sugar and keep pressing the button and just, like, not take the sugar. <laughs> so they're just like, oh, I don't care about that. I want to I want to see more pictures. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Well, maybe. That is really interesting. So, it, um, the conclusion that the article drew, anyway, was that animals, many animals, find breaking monotony a reward in itself so yeah. if you're like tired of the sugar keep pressing the button it'll give you like movement to do with your body which is good because it's less boring and it also gives you an ever-changing stimulus to look at the picture so maybe it's not about like vanity um maybe it's just basically you get to see something new all the time and they were saying that that can be applied to humans and why they like social media like maybe it's not about prying into other people's lives or sharing our own lives. It's just about breaking the monotony and like constant stream of new images. Maybe. It would explain why it like doom scrolling through Yeah. Nonsense for hours. Well, isn't doom scrolling where you like go through a bunch of sad news? Because okay. I don't really do sorry, doom scrolling. I, 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 I use that wrong, sorry. I definitely do like useless meme scrolling where I'm just like, oh that's funny and I go on, oh that's funny and just like three hours later, like, no <laughs> Yeah. I do that, but none of the memes are funny, so it's just a waste of time. <laughs> Maybe you need to have lower standards. <laughs> Maybe. Facebook oh, just yeah. loves that showing me boomer memes and like... Well, don't do it on Facebook then. Do it on like Reddit really or Instagram. But Politically I, charged memes. <laughs> I challenge all the uh, people listening to send in some fun memes for Thomas because he's so meme deprived. I'm fine. Like I don't know. <laughs> No, I'm okay. He wants your memes. I've seen all the memes. He wants your memes, please. Make original ones no, that he's I've never seen, seen too before. too many memes. Make original ones. Something about wildlife, dinosaurs, something about him. You know, go really straight for the heart. <laughs> <laughs> as insulting as possible. And it'll be featured on the show. Yeah, we will Maybe. feature your memes on the show. Unless it's like really Is offensive. a meme competition? Ooh, and what did the winner get? 
Shout out. Okay. <laughs> Show the meme on the YouTube video. How about 1% of the profits from this podcast? They'll get 1%. Well, that's zero. So <laughs> we're actually losing money, so they'll get uh, charged. Okay. Good. Good. Very good. Um, Maybe. But yeah, nothing. If you are going to do that, that's probably not going to happen. But nothing offensive, I guess. He guesses. Please, nothing offensive. Because <laughs> I don't want to show it and get in trouble. We're not going to show anything offensive. We'll figure it out on our own if it's offensive. Yeah, so Feel if free you to send, send in it something to offensive, <laughs> if you send in something offensive, it probably won't get shown. Yes. Okay. Time for your story now. Okay. Wait. Mika, oh yeah. Never mind. Sorry. Mm-hmm. What do the Barbary lion and the Javan tiger have in common? They're both mammals. Anything else? They're both felines. Anything else? They're both from Eurasia. Are they not? Is the Barbie lion from Africa? Uh, has, you're not giving me the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> Are they both extinct? Presumed extinct? Yeah, both okay. presumed extinct. However, have you seen any... Do you know who Forrest Gallant is? No. Okay, well, recently, a hair was found in Western Java, I think. And when the hair was examined, it seemed to be from the supposed extinct Javan tiger. It was just one hair, like, on the ground? It was on a fence. Oh, okay. And there were people who claimed they'd seen the tiger go past there. So the tiger hasn't really been seen since the 1980s, and it was declared extinct in 2003, I think. Forrest Galante is like a biologist who does who did a, a show called Extinct or Alive for Discovery, I think. And they went to that area and they like took infrared video and they found like a big cat, which they thought could have been the tiger, but it's sort of inconclusive. Now that they have the hair, seems a little more conclusive, but maybe not exactly. Because if you read certain articles, it says it's similar, mm-hmm. but they're not sure. So they're starting to put up a lot more camera traps in the area, and they're hoping to see if they can find it. That sort of confuses me, though, because let me ask you a question, since you're a biologist. Mm-hmm. If you have a hair of an animal, is that not pretty conclusive? Well, did they do genetic tests on it and find out it was the same? I don't understand what you're saying. They didn't say that they did genetic testing. They said it was similar. Well, then that's not proof. To... It's just a hair. Like, it could be anything. Yeah. Another thing was that conservation organizations are worried that people are publishing this and saying this because mm-hmm. they're afraid hunters will show up mm-hmm. and try and kill whatever's left. And that's maybe a little bit of a philosophical question, but... Would you, let's say you were in some place and you saw a Javan tiger, would you tell people? I would tell you. <laughs> like, Because I was just think, thinking about it because it's like, oh, well, if you tell people, then they can send rangers out there and put camera traps and everything. But like so far, we've been failing at that for like every single wild cat is endangered. Maybe I would tell some trusted rangers in the area and uh, I wouldn't like publicize it in the newspaper. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably a good answer. Well, you know, it sort of uh, reminds me of the of a plot of a TV show. And spoiler ahead for uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender animated show. So don't you know? Don't listen for the next thirty seconds or whatever. They go to this like ancient place, and then they find that the dragons that everyone thought were extinct are still there. And the last person who went there from outside didn't tell anyone because he didn't want people to go there and try to hunt them. So Mm. it's like a pretty noble thing, but it's also pretty sad. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of the thylacine as well, because I get a lot of comments saying if I ever saw one, I wouldn't tell anyone. Mm. Yeah. Well, I thought that was some exciting news. Do you Mm -hmm. want to move on to your next story? Wait, don't you have more questions? You have a last question here for your story. Oh, yeah, but I accidentally spilled the beans. What is the only cat that is not endangered? The domestic cat. Correct. Cool. <laughs> That's pretty sad. That's not cool. No, it's cool that I got it right because it was easy. Yeah. Okay, what's your next story? My next story is about the pandemic, wildlife and the pandemic. So how do you think wildlife fared during the pandemic? Um, do you agree with the, the earth is healing memes? Well, considering the way you said that, I guess there's a twist I mean, do you? I mean, at the time, I remember the big news stories were like, "Oh, look at the dolphins in Venice and yeah. all this wildlife returning to areas that hadn't been seen in years." Mm-hmm. Again, don't look at my little notes. 
Okay. So how would you study how the wildlife reacted to the pandemic? Do like a population survey and compare it to before and after? So that like that takes a really long time and you don't know if the uh, numbers are going to be accurate because you don't have you might not have before of where you want to study. This study was done like for all over the world. If it's not all over the world, surely there are some population studies. Do you want me to tell you the study, how it was done? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they used camera trap data, camera traps that were available before and after um, from all over the world. So they used camera traps like in different countries, in different habitat types, and in different human density areas. What do you think are some factors that could influence how certain species of wildlife reacted? To this period of time some factors mm -hmm. like do you think all the types of animals reacted the same to the lack of travel and stuff in the pandemic probably not like what do you think are some reasons why they would act different well i'm guessing some animals like the big stories were that some animals returned to areas because of less human uh less people being there but then i'm guessing some animals <laughs> might might rely on humans like maybe they scavenge after mm -hmm. us or something Maybe it was actually slightly worse for them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. So, uh, so um, carnivores and rural habitats were more active when there were fewer people around, and large herbivores and urban habitat they had actually less activity when there were fewer people. So, the large herbivores prefer people to be out and about because scare away the predators. Yes, exactly. Oh. Uh... So maybe the herbivores are using people as a shield from carnivores. Um, so when there aren't as many people out, like on the trails or I don't even know, like whatever, around town or driving on the road, mm. then they feel less secure. Um, it's also possible that they're seen more on camera traps because they're not staying in one place and eating leisurely in a leisurely way. They have to keep moving because people keep coming to their space. So that could be another reason why when people go back into a landscape, the large herbivores get more active. Okay. Yeah. So um, basically, the carnivores are avoiding high people areas, and the herbivores are not, or they're being more active in high people areas, such as like national parks got more active at certain times during the pandemic. So you would see that um, effect there. There's um, also an increase of activity in urban areas when people are around, but at night. Why do you think that is? There's an increase in activity. Is this of herbivores, carnivores, or what? Every urban area, every animal in an urban area, basically. There's an increase at night when humans are around? Mm -hmm. Why would that be? In an area where there's more human activity throughout 24-hour periods, there's an increase, but only at night, of the animal activity. Is that scavenging? Yeah, basically it's about scavenging. Animals that live in urban areas, they're already fine with people, so they're not avoiding like areas where people might have been earlier that day, but they don't want to go in the middle of the day. Like, that's crazy. So they go at night where they can get food and trash when then they can also avoid people. So this is true for every animal, basically, except for large omnivores like bears. I think that's because they're like more in danger from humans. So they're, even if, oh. even if it would be okay to go at night, if they got caught, it's way dangerous for them. So they seemed to continue to stay away from those areas. So yeah, like during the pandemic, maybe when people weren't out in the streets as much, it seems that these urban animals were not also out. They were going somewhere else. What? I guess that makes sense. Did you ever notice like, well, actually during the pandemic, my life did not change that much at all. I feel like people were going out yeah. around the same amount, but it would have been interesting to see like, because there were bears in my neighborhood and I'm not sure if their activity increased or decreased during that time. Yeah. Seemed to be about the same. Yeah. It's interesting because we weren't living in like a high tourist big city area. We were living in a place where like people are going to keep going to their jobs and keep going to the grocery store. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's everything. Unless you have more to add. Um, I have one more story. Okay. I'm just going to lead right into wild chat. Well, I don't know how much of news this is, but I thought it might be a bit fun. So a travel company known as Explore Worldwide analyzed some Google search trends from more than 180 countries to see which animals people want to see the most. Mm. So I was wondering if you can guess any of the animals that made the top 10 list. Okay, here we go. 
Are you ready? Yeah, don't spew out a load of them, though, because I'm going to tell you if they are, and then I want to ask if you can guess where. Can't I spew some out? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, elephant. Don't be spewing. Yes. Can you guess where elephant is on the list of top ten? Three. No. Can't I just, like, guess a bunch and then, like, rank them after? And guess where they are after? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you're correct with elephant, so just remember that. Tiger. Correct. Lion. Correct. Leopard. False. Cheetah. Incorrect. Hippo. Correct. Okay. Rhino? Nope. Okay, so we've got lion, tiger, hippo, elephant, right? Giraffe. Nope. Oh, yeah, and tiger. Wait, wait how many do I have? Lion, tiger, no. Four, I think. Lion, tiger, elephant. Lion, tiger, hippo, hippo. elephant. Okay. Water buffalo? It's weird because it's one of the big five for a game in Africa, but I've never been like super interested in water buffalo. So, bear. No, there's more marine life. Dolphin. Than get. Correct. Shark. Nope. Whale. Yep. Okay. Okay. Turtle. No. Will I give you the last few? Give me a hint. Uh, there's another marine mammal. Uh, a bird. Sea otter, maybe? Uh, no, a bit bigger. Um, l- seal? Yep. There's a bird, you said? Mm-hmm. Uh, huffin? No. Penguin? Yeah. Uh, there's an ape and an ungulate left. Correct. And, uh, moose? No. Smaller. Surely not a deer. Uh, let me think. Well, I, huh? elk, it says. Elk? That's on the top ten list? Yeah, this is a weird list, man. Elk? Elk you can see, yeah. like, any day in this uh, area. That's funny. Well, this is from 180 different countries, so I think that's why but other, the results might other be surprising to us. don't know what elk are. Okay, here's, no, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I think. Elk and moose are actually commonly confused because the word for elk in Europe is moose. Or no, the other way around. The word for moose in Europe is elk. So maybe they mean moose, and I was right. Maybe. Like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it's it's very really confusing. It's hard to say what people mean when they say elk. Because when people came okay. to the North America and they saw the elk for the first time, they were like, oh my god, it looks just like an elk. And then they saw that there were moose. They were like, oh no! <laughs> we already named the other <laughs> thing an elk. <laughs> Because okay. I would, I could see wanting to see a moose. I do not see wanting to see an elk, especially if you're from like some other place in the world where this elk are not that. They're just big deer, you know. But moose are crazy. Yeah, I agree with that. So. So maybe you don't want to guess all of them. Can you guess what number one is on the list? Is it a tiger? Yeah. Yeah. Forty-four countries a tiger. And I think lowest is elk. <laughs> is that true? No, oh, elk really? isn't lowest. There's two below elk. Elk is number eight. Okay, um, like the... I even forgot what we've had so far. Like the seal or something? No, seal is number six. Oh. Um, hippo? Uh, hippo is number two after tiger. Really? Who are these hippo fanatics out there? 28 <laughs> countries. Their top choice was a hippo. Why? That's so I weird. That's interesting. Last, uh, like, I don't know what could be last. Whale? No, no whales number are four. People obsessed with whales. They're always going this, on whale This first. is an animal that a lot of people are obsessed with, and you'd imagine would be way higher, especially considering the tiger is number one. Lion? Yeah, lion is Oh, well, ten. I agree with that. You know how I feel about lions. <laughs> you'd rather see an elk than a lion? <laughs> I'd rather see a moose, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> the look of your face, on your uh, face of like total. Disgust. I'm just gonna read them out because okay. I think it's probably confusing to remember where they all are. So lion was the top choice of four countries. I guess it's tied with elephant that was also the top choice of four countries. Elk was five countries at number eight. Seven is penguin. Six is seal. Five is gorilla. Four is whale. Three is dolphin. Two is hippo. One is tiger. Mm. Okay. Some of my students would have Which... said only white tigers. They only want to see white tigers in the wild. And if they if you show them a normal tiger, they'll be like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I like the other types of tigers. And and as my students would say, and they cannot swim. Right. And they eat like 
hay or something. <laughs> <laughs> they eat zebras and hay. They live in the savanna. Mm -hmm. Actually, tigers do live in the savanna, I learned. Because there is savanna habitat in uh, some parts. But No. Well, apologies. My mistake. <laughs> but I don't think that's what they meant, though. No, because anyway. they're... <laughs> Let's bash on some kids for not knowing things. Use that to jump into wild chat? Yes, please. So you didn't seem too impressed with that list. I thought <laughs> maybe we could try and put together our own list. Well, maybe choosing like f five each. Now that I think that it, the elk is a moose, it makes more sense. And I think that would be on your list because you were like really wanting to see a moose when you were over here. Remember that? Yeah. It's not on your top five, though. Are you... Do, you, do you want to choose one first? Okay, are you going to be writing these down? Yeah, I'll, ty I'll type it in the document, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, I want to see a tiger. Tiger, okay. Now your turn. I guess I'll say lion. Boo! <laughs> no lion! No! Stop putting lions Just down. Just watch The Lion King if you're so pressed to see a lion. Just watch The Jungle Book if you want to see a tiger. No, but in The Jungle Book, the tiger is a villain. Yeah. You know what's a really good movie about tigers? That movie Two Brothers. Oh my god. I saw that movie in theaters. It changed me. I was so sad. <laughs> you know that? I think I saw it in theaters you know as well, but I don't remember it that well. It has like these two little tiger babies and then their yeah. mom gets killed and then they're like raised together and then or, or they're like helping each other. Oh, they out. split yeah, up. Then they, then they get split up and one of them gets sent to like a circus or something and the other one gets sent to uh -oh. sit, made a pet, something like that. Oh my goodness, that yeah. was so sad. I remember the scene where the tiger killed the dog. Oh, this is sad. Okay, choose another animal. Oh, okay, um... How about a whale shark? I want everyone to know that this is sort of arbitrary based on how I feel right now, because I want to see lots of different animals, and it's cruel to ask me to limit it to five. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not some... Well, this is just like... A little game off the top of our head. It's not, I'm not some I'm not person gonna who's going to who's gonna be on these surveys and be like, I only have one animal I want to see, and it's a hippo. That's not me, okay? <laughs> I, I'm not even going to put hippo on the list. You can if you want. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't care about uh... care less. I feel like I'm just copying you, but I did at one point want to put Great White Shark on the list. Okay. For me, I would like to see a cheetah. Oh. A lot of cats on this list. You know I like cats more than anything. Cheetah. Okay, I'm going to say a green anaconda. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say maybe I'd like to see orangutans. Why not? I'm going to say an African elephant. Well, what do you have against Asian elephants? Well, I'd rather see the bigger of the two. But Asian elephants have way cuter ears. The same. No, African elephants have way. They have Asian ears. elephants have those tiny little ears. Okay. I don't want tiny ears. <laughs> I want big, huge, flappy ears. Um, what else am I interested in? I keep thinking of like Australia, but honestly, there's nothing in Australia <sighs> that I really want to see. It's more just like as a collective. You know what I mean? Like I'm not super excited to see a koala, but I'm excited about the fact that Australia has so many things that are interesting. And if I were to choose one, it would just be rude to the other one. I mean, I'd like to see a thylacine. Uh, can I put that? <laughs> no, that would be for a cryptid list someday. Okay. Um, I need to think about different animals now. Ooh, a snow leopard. That's like snow that's leopard. like the holy grail for all wildlife viewing is a snow leopard. One of the hardest animals to see in the wild. So much so that there's been a book written about the philosophical uh, and, like, the feeling of depression of trying to see a snow leopard. I mean, this is with one more. Well, you reminded me, since you talked about Australia, say a saltwater crocodile. Okay. Some honorable mentions. I was thinking about Komodo dragons. They're so fun. What else? Like, harpy eagles. Gorillas would be nice. Yeah. But I like I like orangutans more maybe for this list because I feel like orangutans are really nice. Gorillas are a bit scary. Orangutans aren't that nice. 
Oh, I feel like I feel like they're just a happy family all together hanging out in the trees. They're not. Um, I don't know. You can look into. That. Imagine if I put down like a duck or something. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if that was on the other list, like number two, <laughs> duck. Are they real? I want to see one. Crow. I wonder what the age range was. I don't know. It's interesting. Hmm. I want to see more yeah, about the methods it? of this study. Yeah. Uh, do you want to try and rank? I don't know. I don't really care. You can just rank it. I mean, we can just leave it at that, I guess. I don't think anyone cares about... Well, maybe they care. I don't... Maybe you care a lot, but... I think it's enough to just know that these are some animals we want to see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we move on? Sure. I mean, if you really want... If it's a matter of pride, you can put lion up higher. A matter of pride. (laughs) (laughs) I would be lying if I didn't say that was a funny joke. It's funny. You good, right? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Why are you such a tiger fan girl? Maybe it is that movie Two Brothers. <laughs> I just <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's like really I feel connected to like the Indian landscape where they are. I feel like it's a mysterious and lush place. I think that tigers are really unique color scheme that you don't see in any other animal i think oh i also had this really cool picture book when i was little about like a day in the life of a tiger and it had like really beautiful drawings and it's just all about like the artistic and the spiritual and all these feelings i feel when i think about tigers that i don't feel about lions i don't know does that make sense because like if you went on a tiger safari you could have like you could stay at a temple um you could like eat really good food and like i'm sure there's really good food in many different places in africa where you can see lions and there's probably like cool spiritual religious experiences you can have too but it's just not as into the psyche i think like they have eat pray love she never went to like she didn't go to um africa to pray you know what i'm saying okay so i just feel like tigers an interesting answer tigers are very spiritual do you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to see a version of Eat, Pray, Love where she goes to India and she just gets, like, attacked by a tiger. <laughs> but she's okay and the tiger's okay. Just a little thing. Or maybe she, like, worships okay. the tiger. Hmm. I don't know why, but I'm just thinking about the saber-toothed tiger from 10,000 BC. Mm. That's a good that, one. like, wouldn't kill that. Yeah. That's... Didn't want to kill the man. That's very good scene. He domesticated the first cat. I don't think it was really it domesticated. Was domesticated. I decided not to eat him. Because <laughs> he saved it. He saved it from the trap. Yeah. It was probably eaten by the terror bird, though. Mm. Because in that movie, like, all the time periods and habitats are the same thing. Because they can walk through it in, like, one day. <laughs> yeah. And the timelines are all messed up. And then they'll go to Egypt and build the pyramids. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen that movie. With the help of mammoths. <laughs> yeah. I don't care though. I like I liked it anyway. <laughs> it's really good. I like the visual of mammoths like climbing up the pyramids. And has it been disproven I mean, that mammoths built the pyramids? No. Or has it? I don't know. Maybe it has. No mammoths found in well, Egypt. Well, it probably wouldn't be mammoths. It would be elephants. The mammoths would be dead from heat exhaustion. Yeah. Or at least no woolly mammoths. I don't know if there's other species there. Anyway, shall we move mm-hmm. on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one thing I have sound effects for, and it's the one thing you do sound effects for. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are we doing a debate today so, or a discussion? What do you want to do? I guess we could do a debate. We haven't done one in a while. Okay. Are you pro or against? What do you want to do? Do you have an opinion? I mean, I don't think this is a real animal. Fine, I'll be pro. Okay. Okay. You'll be the molder. So, uh, I'll be the scully. So the animal for cryptid court today is the Steller's sea ape. Um, it was observed by the German zoologist Georg Steller on August 10th, 1741, around the Schumagin Islands in Alaska. Shall I read the uh, description that he wrote? I, I printed the whole... Sure. I like copied and pasted the entire description from his diary. Is that too much? Um, it's not that long, though, is it? Okay. So I'll pretend I'm Georg Steller, or you pretend I am, okay? I'm not going to do a 
okay. German accent. So just I'm sorry. Um, Say it in German. <laughs> no. On August 10th, we saw a very unusual and unknown sea animal, of which I am going to give a brief account since I observed it for two whole hours. It was about two Russian L's in length, which is about five feet long. The head was like a dog's with pointed erect ears. From the upper and lower lips on both sides, whiskers hung down. The eyes were large, the body was long, rather thick and round, tapering gradually towards the tail. The skin seemed, thick, seemed thickly covered with hair, of a gray color on the back, but reddish white on the belly. In the water, however, the whole animal appeared red like a cow. The tail was divided into two fins, of which the upper, as in the case of roosters, was twice as large as the lower. Nothing struck me as more surprising than the fact that neither forefeet nor in their stead fins were to be seen. For, around, for over two hours it swam around our ship, looking as with admiration, first at the one and then at the other of us. At times it came so near to the ship that it could have been touched with a pole, but as soon as anybody stirred it moved away a little further. It could raise itself one third of its length out of the water exactly like a man, and sometimes it remained in this position for several minutes. After it had observed us for about half an hour, it shot like an arrow under our vessel and came up again on the other side. Shortly after, it dived again and reappeared in the old place, and in this way it dived perhaps thirty times. They are drifted by a seaweed, club-shaped and hollow at one end like a bottle, and gradually tapering at the other, towards which, as soon as it was sighted, the animal darted, seized it in its mouth, and swam with it to the ship, making such motions and monkey tricks that nothing more laughable can be imagined. After many funny jumps and motions, it finally darted off to sea and did not appear again, it was seen later, however, several times at different places of the sea. Yes. So what do you think? So I think this may just be like a, a little joke. A joke. By Mr. Steller. This, the serious zoologist, Mr. Steller. You're saying he's joking. On this particular animal, possibly, because this wasn't published in his uh, official documents. This was from his diary, right? Mm -hmm. And it was only published after his death. Whereas all the other animals, like the Stellar Sea Cow and the Stellar's Eagle, mm -hmm. were uh, published in his official well, writings. Well, perhaps he felt too embarrassed uh, about the paucity, the very few, like, not very much information that he had about this animal. So as a serious scientist and a serious man, he didn't want to publish it because he didn't have all the details he needed compared to the other animals that he gathered a lot of information on. How much more information do they have on all the other animals? Uh, enough to like a sea otter is a bit ridiculous if you've never heard of them before. Well, I don't know. I haven't read his uh, stuff about the other animals. Okay. Well, I think it's weird that he'd talk about all these other animals and just leave this one out. And also, apparently, he didn't like the captain, who was, I can't remember his first name, Bering. Mm -hmm. Who Bering Strait was named after. And some people think that this ape that was, what was the word, clowning around in the... <laughs> oh, doing monkey tricks? Yeah. Was actually like a parody of this guy it was like making fun of him because the full scientific name he gave it was i see simnia marina danica and danica is, means danish and the only danish person on board was captain Bering, who he didn't like because he wouldn't let him go on land to like explore yeah. and <laughs> research animals except for one time when he let him go for like 10 hours but that was all yeah well i think you were doing poor mr What's his name? Mr. Stella? Stellar. I think you're doing him a disservice by acting like he's so unprofessional that he would make this like weird fan fiction about his... Uh... In his <laughs> personal diary that he didn't show to anyone. Okay, well, if he wasn't going to show it to anyone, then who ended up reading it? Huh? It was a private collector Some who private published collector it after his death. Some bought his diary? What a creep. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> most of his writings are bought by private collectors, apparently. Um. Well, however, you have to remember that there was another sighting, at least another sighting, of this animal in June 1965 on the northern coast of Otka Island. They described this creature as also being about five feet tall or 1.5 or five feet long, 1.5 meters long, having um, reddish yellow fur, and a face resembling that of the dog breed the Shih Tzu with drooping Chinese whiskers. Which sounds very similar to how he described his Stellar's sea ape. So, are you saying that all of these people, these the secondary these group of people, people, did they also make it up? They secondary didn't know. group? They didn't know. Wait, how many people? How many people? It was were like part a mom and sighting? her kid or something. I don't remember. But <laughs> they didn't know about Stellar's whole in like diary entry. 
So they saw it independently and described I've it the same that. way because it hadn't been uh, publicized yet or something. I don't know. Or they, they well, did, yes, maybe they didn't read about it. 1965? They didn't, they weren't. Maybe they didn't, maybe they, they did. They weren't big scholars of the Stellar's diaries. They weren't cryptozoologists. They were just two people on a little ha- fun trip to Alaska. And uh, they saw the same thing that Stellar did. Now explain that. <laughs> <laughs> this animal, I don't think, if he'd published it normally, I don't think anyone would have even like, everyone's like, well, he was too afraid to talk about he it. He was like, afraid because what? it threatened him. <laughs> threatening. It was monkey doing monkey tricks. Monkey tricks could be very threatening. Have you never seen um what was it? Toy Story 3? That monkey terrifies me. And it should terrify you. Monkeys I just don't see what's are, so strange about this animal that he wouldn't have written about. Monkeys are like, menacing. A stellar sea cow is much more like an impressive creature. A 30 foot long manatee or a steel-like okay, creature with well, whiskers? Well, here's some more things. We know that he was very malnourished. His crew was suffering scurvy and things like that at this point in the trip. So perhaps he was too embarrassed um, by his observations. He thought they were too silly and maybe colored by his own lack of nutrition and his own state of mind. And he thought, I can't publish that because no one will believe me. Because they'll just be like, oh, he's crazy. He's, he, he, he had scurvy. Okay, you said, <laughs> so according to your theory, Stellar himself didn't believe what he saw. No, he believed it. he was just too mad. He believed it. He just thought other people wouldn't believe him and it would be too much effort to um, justify it. And it would be embarrassing for him, especially considering he didn't have the amount of research on it that he would have liked. How much research did he need? He just made an observation. I don't know. You ask him. Well, wait, we can't. Hmm. No, we can't. <laughs> we can't. Maybe you can ask that mom and the daughter, the only other people who have ever seen this thing. Well... I also have some more theories. This goes out of the binary of me pro, you against, but I do think it's possible he saw a fur seal because he hadn't mm-hmm. seen one yet. And actually the description is very similar to a seal. The way they bob up and look at you for a little bit and then they like playfully swim around. Um, that's such a seal behavior. And the yeah. whiskers. Uh, the... So I was just going to say there's a theory by the cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman that it was a, a deformed fur seal that he saw. Mm-hmm. But I disagree with the deformity because I think um, it was playful. So if it was really so mm. deformed that it didn't have like fins where it should have had fins or flippers or whatever you want to yeah. call them, then that is uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, should I go over the different theories about what it could be? Yeah. Can I just ask really quick before yeah. you said that? So he hadn't seen a fur seal before then? No, he hadn't seen one on his trip yet. He saw one later, and then he was able to describe it in more detail as a fur seal. Oh, huh. okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Because I was listening to some pro arguments, and someone was saying, like, he would have known if it was a fur seal. Yeah, he would have known later. But I... He would have been like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. the same animal, but maybe he sort of forgot about it. Again, because... I think he really wasn't in his right mind. And it was a month and a half later yeah. when he wrote about it. And it, I think diary. it's possible, like, whether he was making it up to make fun of the captain or not. I mean, that could be one theory, but it also could be that he did see a fur seal and he was like, ha ha, it looks sort of like the captain. He's goofing off and he's just like, yeah, either he's just having a fun time or he's like a little bit <laughs> malnourished and stuff. And he's like, oh, that's not a really good observation. I don't really know mm-hmm. how true that is, but later he sees the first seals and he's like, now I'll make some good scientific observation. Anyway, so here are some more theories, some things that other people have said it might have been throughout the years. Some people said, oh, I just saw a snake, which is weird. Um, <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> some people thought it was a turtle. Some people said it was a dog headed mermaid, which is just terrifying. Wow. Uh, manatee. Which is actually interesting because considering he did con- discover the stellar sea cow later, like imagine if there was just a smaller version of the stellar sea cow that he saw that we've never been able to see like again. Like a juvenile? Like maybe a juvenile or maybe um, a smaller species that wasn't discovered. You know, that's mm. an interesting one. Um, an undiscovered leopard seal relative. So leopard seals are in the south, so- south pole. They eat penguins. And they're the only seal, apparently, that swims with their four flippers pressed against their body so that they're not visible if you were looking from a ship. Other seals, they, you could see oh, their fins. Um, so maybe there's a leopard seal relative that lives in the north. 
I could see that, especially considering the amount of marine wildlife there was at that time. Like, they could be eating the great auk, you know, which is this the niche equivalent of the penguin. Mm. Um, some people thought it was a vagrant Hawaiian monk seal, which would have been a bit cold for them, but I don't know. This was a theory I saw one person put. I don't remember who it was, but they thought it was a juvenile Bacillosaurus. You should put a picture of that up. I was like, I laughed out loud when I saw that. <laughs> like, oh my God, imagine. Yeah. Um, another person thought it was an undiscovered long neck seal, which apparently another biologist had theorized existed before. Bernard Huevelmans, is it? I don't know. I didn't write any of these names down. Okay. Then there's the northern fur seal theory, the malformed fur seal theory, which I don't think is true because of the problems with uh, how active it was swimming. But if you're looking at a picture of a northern fur seal and saying that doesn't fit, you should look at a picture of a female because apparently the females have the right size and coloring that the males don't. They have the reddish fur and the gray back um, and the smaller size. And then finally, the theory that it's just a joke about Bering, Captain Bering, who had a weird beard. But I feel like it's probably something but combined with the joke. Yeah, I feel like he saw like a seal playing and he wasn't really sure because he couldn't see it too well. And he was just like, it looks sort of like the captain. <laughs> that's my uh, un. That's my real opinion about it. Yeah, because I feel like if he really did think it was this animal, he would have written something official about it. Yeah. But you should put these pictures, like the pictures of the sea ape are so interesting. And I also saw one thing that said that people believed in sea apes a long time before this thing had happened. But that was the, I only saw it mentioned once in a caption of a picture. And it didn't seem, I don't know what evidence there is for that. Because it also said that at that time they called it the Simnia Marina Danica, which according to the other sources I saw, Stellar came up with that name himself. So I do not yeah, believe so that thought. there were people way a long time ago before Linnaeus was going around. Like before Linnaeus' time, they weren't <laughs> using this. Yeah, same. they weren't calling this animal the sea ape, the Danica. So, because what I saw in the caption was that Danish sailors had discovered the sea ape and had named it the Danish sea ape. Which I don't know who wrote that caption. I think they're um, wrong. <laughs> but apparently, that was the picture. Um, I put it first here. It has like horrible, freaky creatures. Apparently that was the Danish notes. I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's also, yeah, if you look up sea ape, it's a disambiguation page on Wikipedia. The common thresher apparently can also be called a sea ape. It's a type of shark. I don't see how it looks like an ape at all. Oh. But maybe that's I what he know. saw. Some of these theories are... <laughs> maybe he just saw a common thresher. Somebody's... No, I think he saw a snake. <laughs> I think he saw a Bacillosaurus. <laughs> a snake doing monkey tricks. He saw a Bacillosaurus and a snake doing a ballet together. Okay, should we move on? Yeah, at first I want to look up more about the common thresher. It is not found in Alaska, so there's no even there's no reason for them to be affiliated with each other. Okay. Go on. Okay, uh, next we're going to do Q&A. Mm -hmm. You can send us an email if you like to thewildworldpodcast at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Wildworld. The Wild World Podcast at gmail.com. Or if you feel like it, you could just leave a comment under the yeah, video. Yeah, leave a comment or a meme. Remember the memes. Uh, so. Yeah, well, you probably have to email that. You could add a link. You could be like, hey, check out my meme and have a really scammy I'm link. Not clicking on... <laughs> yeah, I'm not clicking on any dodgy links. Okay. So this is from uh, Jibba on YouTube. Um, I have a Q and He says, hi. I have a Q&A question for the next podcast. How long does it take to make a video for the Wild World channel? Keep up the good work, Thomas and Mika. Minimum a week, usually two or more weeks. And it takes us, the most time it takes us is like time to find to record it together. And yeah. like thinking about what we're going to go over and then like posting the poll for the cryptid ahead of time. So there's enough time to vote on it and a lot of making the document. Times that happens as we we have like a time set out and then on that day we like run out of time because we're both trying to like read the news articles and stuff and we have to push it back or something yeah and then but once we finally make a time to do it and we record it and we have all the stuff we've done our research and for me like research takes at least a day if not two because i like to read a lot of stuff and anyway after that then we record and that takes only like an hour 
But then you have to edit it. And how long does that take? Um, it could take up to 10 hours. Yeah, because I'm really noisy. Which sounds... Well, it's just that what you're listening to, listener, <laughs> has a lot of ums and dead silence and uh <laughs> and like weird mouth noises <laughs> removed. You might think there's a lot in the podcast, but you're only listening to like 10%. You should do an, uh, a director's cut, unedited version, where it's just like... All of the mm. it's horrible because <laughs> I still there's still some left in, but uh, anyway, thank you for your question. Did you Juba. 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 Um, yeah, that's all Sorry. we have today. So, right. next, don't look at the screen, I'm about to reveal a secret. I have a comment for you. I want you to tell me the video it comes from, okay? okay. The comment is. Yeti, come see, come see real Yeti in Indonesia, bro. In Indonesia, Yeti is gushed, real big gushed, like King Kong, but with big size. This real bro in every mountain in Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess what that's from? Well, it must be from the Yeti video. Yeah, um, obviously. But then there was a reply to it. The reply said, Yeti equals Gondoruo in Indonesia. You can search with key Gondoruo. So why don't you search that right now? G-O-N-D-O-R-U-W-O. Did they reply to themselves? I think it was someone else. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Gondoru. Gondoru. It was... Uh, it looks like some weird horror movie. Yeah, but it also looks like it's a real cryptid. There's a lot of interesting pictures. Oh, yeah. But the weird thing about this comment, one of the things is, they said Yeti as Y-E-T-Y. Every single time they spelled it Y E T Y, and then they said they said it's a ghost. Is that like a misspelling of ghost, or is a ghost something else? And why did they say it's like King Kong but with big size? Are they saying it's bigger than King Kong? <laughs> like, I need to know because King Kong is huge, right? Wow. And also, bigger. they're claiming very uh, confidently it's in every mountain in Indonesia, every single one. So is this like a like a mountain spirit type thing, like a, or is it? Are they really saying that there's a, a ghost King Kong's bigger than King Kong uh, Gondoruo in every mountain? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, here's the plot of Gondoruo, 1981. Perhaps it was a creature that became popular after the movie, or because perhaps the movie just talked about a, mo- a creature that already was popular. Um A family moves into a house with a mysterious past, only to learn that it is also home to evil forces. Now, that doesn't really seem cryptid-y. That just seems like... Sounds more paranormal. Yeah. Um, So I would really like to know what you meant by this, commenter, if you're listening to this. You probably aren't. Um, Tell me more about... (laughs) (laughs) Tell me more about what a ghost is. I'm sorry if I'm making fun of you for just just spelling ghost wrong, but, like, maybe I'm just... I don't know what a ghost is. And... Tell, me, tell us more yeah. about a Gondoruo. You know, just give, give us all the information. I want to know more. I mean, it may just be some, like, weird translation error as yeah, well. Yeah, it's possible. It was just, like, really entertaining to see this because it was so serious. It was like, you don't need to look into the Yeti. You need to look into the Gondoruo, man. <laughs> I mean, if this podcast goes on long enough, I'm sure it'll be in one of the cryptid courts. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that concludes everything. Mm-hmm. Do you have any final words for the listeners? Any advice? So my like advice is that um, Thomas is... Uh, he's not too hard to please, actually. He, he'll like any of your memes. <laughs> Just send him whatever you can think of. <sighs> like, badly made. I don't even like badly memes. Badly made on Microsoft Paint. You do like memes. You're always sending me memes. But it's... It's like meta though. I'm like making fun so of. He wants meta memes. The meme he maker. Wants a That's a bit meme mean. That makes fun of yourself, please. No, I send you like the weird extreme memes that Facebook thinks I and like. Also, make fun of him. He's not fragile at all. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> Are you fragile? No, you can make fun of me. But really, like, I'd love to see memes. I really think we should do a meme competition for our next thing, our next podcast. Yeah, I remember I used to watch a podcast years ago where it was like every week they'd show like memes or photoshops or something that their fans mm-hmm. did. Yeah, you're letting us down, fans. You need to photoshop more things. Or do AI art. I'd be into that. 
Yeah, yeah. That's that's a controversial statement to say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I don't know. Maybe you're an AI art bro. I don't oh, know. but I am AI, so of course I like AI art. AI art is like my oh, yeah. Picasso. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, share the podcast, comment, comment, and we'll see you next time. Bye.